These are disc brake calipers from a 1983 R100 RS. This is the rear caliper and this is the left front. I thought I'd show the major components and how they go together. There's the fully assembled caliper which has a little plastic cover that fits here in the middle that allows you to get to the disc brake pads so you can change them out without unmounting the caliper. Now those pads are held by a spring clip and two pins that go through. So to get those out, you drive the pins from this end back out. And that then lets you get the clip loose and the pads off. Now the clip has a circle on one end and a half circle on the other. The circle fits on the end closest to the brake inlet and bleed valve. So that looks like this. And that's the little circle. So one of the pins goes through that, which keeps that whole clip from going anywhere. And then the second pin sits over like that. Now there's also um, a center pin here but it's not mounted into the caliper. It's just sitting on the top of the brake pads in a little notch and it sits captive in a notch in that center pin. So that's this little piece here. There's a little groove in the middle and that fits like that. So that's the whole assembly for the brake pads. As I said, once you pull the pins out and you can remove the clip, you can drop the pads out and replace them, so very easy to do. Now I've opened up this one and these are the two fairly hefty 10 millimeter bolts that hold the two halves of the caliper together and they're in threaded holes in the cover here and on the inside when I open it up you see they go together like this and then the bolts clamp everything but across here since there's a piston here and a piston here the brake fluid has to get over to this other half so there's a hole right here that lets the fluid go between the halves and in that is also an o-ring to seal that so it won't leak under pressure. So anytime you crack open these uh, caliper halves, you're gonna replace that. Now, this is the puck and the dust seal. And then the brake pad would fit right on top of that like this. So as that puck is pushed out by fluid pressure, that pad runs up against the disc rotor and gives you all the stopping force. So I'm going to remove the dust seal and then remove the puck and I'll be inspecting the bore and the puck to see if there's rust or chips or other problems with them. I use a small screwdriver to remove the dust seal and what I found is you can just kind of catch it about here get your screwdriver up underneath it and then you can just walk your way around and you got it off. So I'm going to use some uh, compressed air to see if I can blow the puck out of the body. There's uh, the inlet hole here so I'll put some air in that and I'm going to hold my finger over this transfer hole see if I can get enough pressure to pop that up. Now it's going to want to come out of there pretty quick so I'm going to actually wrap it loosely with a rag and put it over these rags so uh, hopefully nothing too violent happens here and let's see what we get. There we go, pop! And there's there's the puck out of the bore and there's the bore so easy peasy so far now on the other half 
you have the bleed nipple so you have to get that out of there and then you can use that as your passage for blowing the compressed air in to pop out the puck on the other side. Now inside the body is a rubber o-ring and the easiest way to get that out is just use a pick and carefully catch it underneath and bend it and it'll pop out. And that's part of the seal between the puck and the body to keep fluid from leaking past. It's a square profile and uh, there's no difference between one end and the other. They're the same. So when you put it back in, you don't have to worry about an up or down. So now that I've cleaned up the parts and gotten the brake fluid off it, this is the puck and this is the back side where all the fluid pushes on it and then this is the front side which faces the pad which is where you have the little hole in it or the dish in it. Um, in looking at it there's no scratching or rusting or anything that I can see so it's in great shape. This is the body that holds the puck and I couldn't see anything wrong with that either, no signs of rust. Right here is the entry hole, which is where the brake fluid comes in from the brake line. So there's a hole drilled through the body and then into the bottom here. So that's how that fluid gets in. The other thing that's interesting here um, is there's a casting mark with 82 in the middle. I have a suspicion that means this was cast in 1982, which makes some sense because the bike's a 1983 model year. This is the Brembo brake caliper rebuild kit for a 1983 R100 RS. The same kit is used to rebuild all three of the calipers, the two front ones and the rear. It comes with a new set of dust seals for each of the pistons and the square o-rings that seal the pistons in the bore. It also comes with the small o-ring to seal the passage for brake fluid between the two caliper halves, along with grease for lubricating the seals and the caliper pistons so that they're easy to slide in. And it also comes with two new M10 bolts for clamping the caliper halves back together. The instruction booklet is large because it covers a whole bunch of different languages. I'm uh, getting ready to install the square profile o-rings into the caliper body, but first I'm going to soak them a little bit in DOT4 brake fluid for about 10 minutes just to season them. These are the calipers that I've repainted using a uh, paint from Duplicolor that gives a similar color to anodized aluminum. And I wanted to make these brake calipers look more like the ones on the 77 RS, which was in blue. These are the pistons, and when I removed them, I marked the inside of the one that goes on the half with the Brembo name with a B. So I'll just get them to go into the same uh, caliper half. Now, when I painted the caliper halves, I masked off this surface as well as this surface. This is where the two halves go together. And I want that to be dead flat with no paint buildup because they have to seal completely or there'll be brake fluid leaking out of the transfer passage between the two halves. So I'm ready to uh, put the square o-ring into one half of the caliper. It's not hard to do. Um, just catch it in the groove um, and then work your way around keeping it in the groove with your finger and it'll eventually pop in it wants to kind of fold over on itself a little bit when you get to the very end of it, but there. Yeah, it's 
it's all nice and smooth in the bore. <clears throat> and then the next thing I'm going to do is put some of the grease all around the inside of the bore and on the seal like so so that I get a good coat of it. That'll act as a lubricant to help the piston or the puck get inside here. And then the, only, the other thing I'm going to do is just put a dash of it on the outside here of the puck so it's nice and lubricated. And then put it together and uh, get it square here on the bore, which I'm not, and just give a push. And it pops right in. So I've already done the other side, so that's good to go. Now that I have the puck and square o-ring in the half of the caliper, it's time to put the dust cover on. That's really straightforward. It just basically take it and stretch it and it will seat right in there like that. Before I put the caliper halves together, I want to ensure that the mating surfaces here and here are dead flat. And the reason for being careful about that is this half of the caliper is the threaded half. And when the 10 millimeter bolts were torqued, it typically will pull up the aluminum right around the bolt hole just a little bit. So that'll create a slightly proud area right around the hole. And so when the two halves go together, they're not going to actually be dead flat and flush. And that becomes a problem because back here, where the fluid passages are, these transfer holes have to mate with the O-ring in the center and they've got to be dead flat and tight so they don't leak under brake fluid pressure. So to get to that condition, I have some 600 grit wet dry paper with a little bit of water on it that I've taped onto a fairly thick piece of glass that used to be on a coffee table. It's the best I can do for a flat surface. And what I'll do is um, take the caliper half. I actually think I'm going to start with this one, which has the threads in it, and put it on top of the paper and go ahead and sand in a figure eight several times, just a few loops like that. And what I'm after is to see whether any of the paint get removed around the bolt hole. And what you see here is paint's been removed. That meant this area around that hole was proud. And there was an area here on this hole that was proud. And my paint mark is just about completely gone. So I think I've done a good job of getting that one nice and flat. And we'll try it on this other half. There's the paint mark before I start, and we'll see what we end up with. Now, when you look, the paint mark's been taken off, but there's only a small little bit of exposed aluminum here, and just a tiny bit here. This is the half that doesn't have the threads, so it doesn't tend to get as deformed. But you can see there was still a slight proud spot. So that's important to do on all of your caliper halves before you assemble them. Now before I uh, bolt the two halves of the caliper together, I have to put the little o-ring in and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that helps lubricate it and make a good seal and then that fits into the hole here just like that and then the other half of the caliper will slide over like that now to hold it together I'm going to use the new 10 millimeter bolts and the screw threads are on the back side 
There, got that one to catch. And that one to catch. And then uh, I'm just going to use a Allen to bring them down snug. And that'll have the body together. Now that I have the brake caliper halves bolted together, I'm ready to install the brake pads and retaining clip. I start by putting a little dab of brake grease on the edge of the piston on both halves of the caliper and a little dab on the bosses of the retaining pin. I put the pads together into a sandwich so I can protect the friction surfaces from getting any grease on them and insert them into the caliper. Next, I install the pin closest to the brake fluid pipes and push it partway in and then I catch it on the circle end of the retaining clip. The next is to install the middle clip in the groove on the top of the pads and then fold the retaining clip over that middle pin. Then I slide the second pin in over the top of the retaining clip and use a drift to drive the two pins tight into the caliper body. The last thing I do is put the black cover on and then two red pieces of tape over the clamping bolts to remind me that I need to torque those after I install the caliper in the bike.